my space? What are the things I like to talk about? What are the things I like to think about? How do I spend my time? How do I spend my money? All of those facts are going to help you to reflect on your highest value. Your life, yeah. the facts don't lie. What you value is being demonstrated and displayed in your life right now. So if you look at it, you'll go, actually, yeah, I, I do value that. But people don't recognize it because they've been injecting the values from other people and discounting their own natural love for life. So you can see where the self-worth wound starts to, you know, get some friction there because people are not valuing who they are. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner, a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. Hey, 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 First Class family. Welcome back to another episode of the First Class Live Show. And you caught me in the middle of a laugh. I know that you are just going to fall in love with our next guest, Self Worth Sam. And listen, before we hop into this discussion, make sure that you subscribe, share, like, love, do all of the things and spread awareness about this podcast because we are talking about the tough and raw topics that we like to hide behind the curtains, okay? But we can't hide them because you can't heal what you don't reveal, okay? So <laughs> we are all struggling with some of the same things and we have to be willing to be vulnerable enough to share our stories so that we know that we aren't alone. And guess what? They impact how we show up in the world, whether we want them to or not. So it's important that we face these tough topics and we uh, uncover the veil, take off the mask, and do all of the things. So again, spread awareness for this show. Meanwhile, I know that you can be doing anything in the world, but you are spending your time here with us while you are learning to maximize your impact while creating your first class life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So without further ado, I greatly appreciate you, and let's hop into this discussion. Welcome, Self Worth Sam. How are you? Hello, Lindsay. It's <laughs> Absolutely awesome to be on your show. I'm feeling great. Um, it's currently 6 a.m. here in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, it's summer. So uh, mm. it's another hot one, but uh, I'm happy to be here. How are you doing? I am well, and I'm excited to talk to you. And I feel like I'm time traveling right now because here is winter, there is summer, here it's a Thursday, there it's a Friday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. We can we can time travel with uh, with computers now. It's great. We can just mm -hmm. in the future or I'm in the future. Anyway, you're in the future. It's cool. You should join <laughs> the future. Come sometime. Yeah, I think I shall. I think <laughs> I shall. So I'm jumping to the future. You're jumping to the past. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> So I've gotten the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about you, and I'm so excited to dive into your story. But before we get into all that, tell us, like, who is Sam really? Who is self-worth Sam? Who is Sam? Like, give us the good gossip, Sam. Like, tell us, who are you? The good gossip. All right. Well, <laughs> I, was, I was born in the most isolated capital city in the world, Perth, Western Australia which is if you fly from LAX, it will take at least 20 hours to fly there. Okay, so it's it's a faraway city and it's a beautiful city. Um, so raised there, beautiful parents, three sisters, no <laughs> brothers. So you can imagine what that might be like. Um, Heaven. Yeah. Well, it had its ups and downs, but the the ups was my my dad he would let me use the car if it if i went and picked up my sisters from the parties that they would go to i'm like that could work that could work so that was a plus of having sisters nice um a little bit more about me let's see um one of the things that i loved doing as a kid was making sound effects 
with my voice and it's known as beatboxing now. And I didn't know that that's what it was in the past, but, uh, I, I fell in love with sound effects from watching star Wars as a kid. And, um, of course I loved music and stuff like this, but I used to just beatbox to myself and compose music. That was something I did as a kid. And, uh, eventually I, I performed on stage and entertained people with beatboxing. So, uh, that's something that I've been able to do along the way. Now, listen, you know, I'm going to have to put you on the spot, but I feel like you're going to be ready. <laughs> you know, Yes, take a sip of water because yeah, yeah. now, you know, we want to hear uh, a right. sample of your skills. Old, old school hip hop is like. <laughs> then you can change it up to like. Or if you want something a bit more housey, and we can get into crazy, like really uh, intricate stuff, like so. I, I entertained myself a lot and and built a business around the sound that my voice could make. So uh, that kind of gives you an indication of how creative or neurotic. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with creative because I loved it. And whenever you switched the styles, I I heard each different style that you went with. The first two were my favorites. I will say that. They were my favorites. But I, 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 I uh, some some hip hop as well. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So you get hip hop in Perth. This is um, a bit of a off the wall question, but it was based off a conversation I had the other day. I don't remember. Um, I think we were in like an Indian restaurant. They were playing Indian movies. And then the person I was eating with, they said, I wonder if they ever watch like African-American movies, you know, just like the different culture. And so I'm going to ask that question to you being from Perth, Australia, how, well, obviously you had access to the hip hop era and all of those things, but did you have access to other cultural dynamics? Well, yeah. Um, so a lot of Indians and Chinese were my friends when I was growing up because mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. Um, it was rare to have an American when I was in school. Like, I think we had one American exchange student and it was like, wow, an American, I've heard about these people. So that was cool. But yeah, like most of my, my, one of my best friends was Indian. Another was Chinese. Uh, so that's been totally normal for me to have, uh, friends from other cultures in my childhood. And I, I love meeting people from around the world. It's great. And currently, uh, one, one of my best friends is, is Iranian. So, um, <laughs> I've got a, a range of friends from around around the world and it's it's interesting to me to to hear about where people come from and you ask mm -hmm. about african american um you know influences and it's i i wouldn't say it's been a dominant sort of uh influence but i'm very interested in it and but certainly when i went to america made some friends with some some beautiful people who um i just fell in love with immediately like just soulful people. I love it. Yeah, because I was about to ask next. I said, what about black friends, Sam? You got any black friends from when you grew up? <laughs> no. I have to admit, I have not traveled to Australia yet. So I'm a little bit ignorant to the cultural diversity there. But that makes sense for there to be a lot of Indians and Chinese nearby. Um, and then also just thinking about, I mean, I know there were the aboriginals and all of the, the native Australians and all of those things, but yes. Did you, did you have any black people around you growing up? <laughs> well, a, a few, a few. Um, yeah, there's when you, when you go to school, um, there's always a, a couple, but not a huge amount, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, when they did come my way, it was, we included them and, you know, treated them like everybody else. Well, at least I did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we appreciate you for that. Now, I promise y'all, I'm going to take this whole seemingly random conversation somewhere. But, you know, we are already operating from different cultures. You mentioned some of your best friends were of different cultures. How do you feel that that started to shape your identity in, like, who you were and what you believe and things like that being exposed because unfortunately there are a lot of people out there that are only isolated into their direct culture and they have no exposure to anything else. And so how do you feel like being around those different cultures um, help to form your identity, whether negative or positive? Yeah, I I would definitely say that growing up um, around Indian uh, people has made me appreciate the the Hindu religion, and then by going into that and and learning about that, it's like oh wow! So there's other religions in the world, yeah, other philosophies, other ways of seeing the world, and that really just opened up my mind to, um, I guess, spirituality, and from around the world, and that there's many different sort of styles, and. I really uh, loved studying as many of them as I could. And eventually I went to do a degree in philosophy. And so I wanted to know what people thought around the world. I wanted to know uh, different ways of thinking about the world. And of course that involves looking at things like spiritual wisdom, cultural, uh, historical things. And so I'm very open-minded about learning about the, the world rather than just the place where I came from. I think it's ironic that, like I said before, my city is the most isolated capital city in the world. Yet I think I balance that by going out to the world and, and looking for the information to, to expand my experience. So I've been very grateful to, to be able to do that. Looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle? then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks, lifestyle affirmation cards, adult coloring books, mugs, notebooks, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and more. All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslightshop.com. Mmm, nice. What suggestions would you share to that person that may be listening that has kind of lived in isolation, whether intentional or not? Um, but what advice would you share to encourage them to explore outside of their comfort zone? I'm going to say that if you if you can travel overseas for a period of time, do that. There's nothing beats traveling and and to another culture and at least trying to learn another language a little bit will do amazing things for your, for the way you see the world and your appreciation of where other people are coming from. And if you are someone who's uh, isolated in that regard that when you have the internet, there's, every possibility to research where people are coming from, their stories and, and to connect and to actually uh, build community with people that are from communities and cultures that are completely different to your own. How, what a beautiful opportunity we have in this world right now. Mm, nice, nice. It makes me want to ask you, so in thinking about one of your friends from another culture who has had the most impact on you as far as really i don't i don't even need to finish that who's had the most impact on you that is the question there is uh my friend steven black guy from jersey city Uh, he is a first responder He's also now uh, getting into the motivational speaking game. And I met him during the pandemic uh, on a Zoom call. And we're just collaborating and creating content. And this guy has just got an uncrushable spirit. And he's got this kind of preacher style sort of motivational energy. And it's just like, 
wow. And we, we caught up on Zoom. He's been in Jersey City and I was in LA at the time. And it was just so, he's got such a soul about him that every time I saw his content or talked to him, it was just like, I felt good just hanging out with him. And like, we're both kind of in that sort of self-development area. And when I listen to him, it's like, he's my friend, but he's, he's also like a, a mentor and a guide just cause he's, he's so, uh, authentic with the way he speaks. So he's been of incredible, um, value to me. He's inspired me and it's like, wow, man, you've, you've got a great story and you are just an example of one of those people that just keep pushing. So he's been uh, a real inspiration to me just for being who he is. So shout Ooh. out to Stephen, Stephen. <laughs> hey, Stephen. <laughs> should get him on the show. He's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Connect us, connect us. Yeah. And we will have a Stephen on here to share this wisdom that you speak of. And, you know, you mentioned, speaking of wisdom, that you, due to the Indian friends that you had, it opened you up to Hinduism, and then you kind of started to explore all of the different um, types of religions and things like that and spirituality. And so what would you say is a common myth about the various religions and spiritualities and like, like a, something that's false, that's not true. Yeah. Uh, that most people, uh, have a good heart and it doesn't matter what the religion they are. Most people have a good heart mm -hmm. and they can come from different places. So, um, don't judge a book by its cover. That's for sure. And mm -hmm. getting to know people, regardless of their religion, we're all humans at the end of the day mm -hmm. and yeah, I think most people at the end of the day, they just want to be able to connect with another human being, see past their differences. And I think what I've realized by talking to a lot of people is that we have more in common than we do our differences. And that's culturally, biologically, uh, it's, and unfortunately many people uh, don't see it that way. They, they mm -hmm. tend to jump straight into how are we different? And that fuels conflict instead of how are we the same? How can we fuel harmony? Which is at least something that I try to do with people is say, how are we, how are we the same? Where can we find a common bond and, and connect and build rapport that way? Yeah, I like that. I know, um, being in the States, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people fear like Muslims and they think that Muslims are terrorists. And we know like that's part of the media's narrative and, mm -hmm. and you know, how we portray different things in the media here in the U.S. Uh, but I had the opportunity to travel to Egypt the other year and I loved it. So obviously I am now surrounded by Muslims, majorly, ma majority, ma Wait, majorly, major yeah, <laughs> majorly, <laughs> majority, that's majority and majorly put together, majorly. <laughs> My brain just couldn't, couldn't figure it out. It's like, you're trying to make up a word, Lindsay. <laughs> Shakespeare made up his own words. You can too. See, thank you. Thank you. So majorly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was surrounded by Muslims and, you know, I really took the opportunity to just ask them questions and talk to them about their beliefs and what I found. I mean, not that I expected any different, but it's like what you just said is that we are more alike than we are different. And what's portrayed in the media is not necessarily what they believe. And, you know, they were all about you know, we are supposed to help our neighbors and our brothers. And if you aren't helping the person next to you, then you must not really love yourself because you should love your neighbor, your brother, as you love yourself and things like that. And, you know, for the few bad apples in the bunch is making everybody look bad. They don't agree with those bad apples either. And so it was just intriguing to just listen to that consistent 
consensus as I talk to every all the different people that we are more alike than we are different and we believe in a lot of the same things. We're just putting it in different words. And so it's important not to allow the media to shape um, our thoughts about other people or even our own identities. Like you said, if you can get out and travel the world to do so, uh, because I really enjoyed <clears throat> that experience. Everyone was nice. I never felt in harm or in danger or unsafe in any way. And so it was really a great experience for me. Nice. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. also in, in addition to that, what I have found universal with people, no matter where I go, is that they, if they have a, you know, they're a, a heart kind of person, like if they're you know, someone with a beautiful soul that they have a reverence for spirituality or they have a reverence for the beautiful things of life. And so you can connect with that and say, we're all looking for something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're all able to tap into something special and we might not know what it is. Some people might call it God, whatever. But I think what unites humanity is that we have this, this heart yearning to to connect with something higher. And that's a, a natural inclination that we have, which I think is a, a great um, starting place to connect people. It's like, oh, you feel this calling too? Yeah, great, let's talk about that. So it's like a mm. really inspirational level rather than keeping it down to the ground of like some petty little problem or a seemingly uh, something different between us. Like, no, we're actually on a, on a high level, we all have this, this calling or this, this feeling for the mystery that we are living in. And I want to know what it is. And I want to, I want to join in and participate. And if there's other people here with me, it's like, great. There's a true, um, let's say, uh, brother and sisterhood in, in that, in that feeling and that knowing that there is something more than what we can see with our eyes and, and hear with our ears. Hey, I know it can be exhausting blazing the trail and creating a legacy. And you're at the point in your life where you desire peace and rest. You want to enjoy both the physical freedom and financial freedom to live life on your terms. You understand the importance of prioritizing your self-care and you know that you're worthy of transformational experiences surrounded by other high-achieving, goal-oriented women just like you. That's why you deserve to be treated like VIP at the First Class Life Luxury Self-Care Retreat for Women. You deserve to show up and just be you, away from the titles and roles that keep you busy from day to day. You deserve the luxury to fully unplug. It's time for you to embrace your first class life. Visit firstclassliferetreats.com to secure your VIP spot today because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. So it makes me think about like... <clears throat> If you were to give your top tips or suggestions to somebody that maybe is feeling that yearning for wanting to find a deeper connection or find something bigger than themselves, but they aren't really sure like how to go about it. So maybe they grew up in isolation as far as their belief system, or maybe they have a lot of questions about, you know, their belief system or spirituality or, you know, for whatever reason, what are your suggestions to start to develop that yearning or that connection that they're feeling? Number one is listen for the call to adventure. This comes from American scholar, Joseph Campbell, who wrote a book called the hero's journey. And he spent years and years, uh, reading every myth in the world, every myth, every religion, every tale. And he summarized, what was going on around the world in these mythological stories. And he came up with the hero's journey and he says, 
at the beginning of every story from humanity, the ordinary character um, is living in the ordinary world and they're oblivious to the wider world. So there's a kind of isolation. The first thing that comes along is a kind of call to adventure or a kind of divine intervention or something happens to that person's life that kind of jolts them, maybe a little shock that makes them go, what was that? Well, that's interesting. And it leads them off on a path of self-discovery. Now, if you are, if you hear it, if the, you hear the call to go on this adventure to find yourself, some people ignore it and they refuse the call. They're like, no, I, I, I don't want to go on the adventure. I want to stay in my comfort zone. But if you do hear the call to adventure or you, you do have this, this voice inside you or, or an inclination that something is calling you, the first thing you can do is just go after that in however way you think you should. The way you, the way you struggle with your own journey is the best way. And we are only ever given the challenge that we're able to overcome, but we are given challenges that are going to make us grow. So I would recommend to people is that they, they listen for that call. It's usually a voice inside. It can actually be meeting someone. You might meet someone who is like, wow, that, that person's got a, a certain vibe about them and that really made you think in a new way. I would suggest follow that, that, um, that path or the, the, the hints, little signposts along the way saying, go this way. And that's also trusting your intuition. It's like, I think I should go down this way for my, my growth. So listen to the call for adventure. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, I always talk about prioritizing self care and that plays into that because sometimes when we're so bogged down with everything else, just busy, 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 go, 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 putting everyone else's needs before our own. We have so much brain fog and brain clutter that when that voice does come, it's hard to hear it. Or if we do hear it, we dismiss it as, oh, it's, it's nothing, just silly thought or something like that. Not realizing like that's our inner God, that's our intuition. That is, for me personally, I believe in God. That is God speaking to us, trying to guide us in that direction, but it's up to us to take it or not. It's up to us to go left or go right, to choose to listen or to dismiss it off. And so when we aren't practicing self-care, it's harder to recognize that inner intuition, that inner voice, um, that silent, low whisper of guidance that is leading us down um, the journey of our self-discovery. Yeah, I think that if you are living a life that is... Um let us say you're, you're happy. Let's say you're happy with life and you're not worried about um, changing anything. It's rare that you will hear the voice because you're, you're happy. Um, but sometimes a person has got um, a spiritual purpose that they've got to go find uh, and they don't realize that. And life has a way of making sure that that person has the little wake up call. And I'm, I'm sure that you've had a certain experience that may have done that for you, but <laughs> many, we will get into that soon. But many people can live a life of let us call it the ordinary zone or the world of the everyday. And then something can, can change the person that makes them go, Hmm, what was that? And I should start to live my life differently. And I think that the first, uh, spiritual realization is is a beautiful moment and people should trust it it it'll take you down a journey that will be uh, well worth the effort yes and you've kind of had an experience like that yourself haven't you i did um in 2008 i was working as a kitchen and bathroom tiler so i was putting in ceramic tiles into people's new homes for their, their bathroom and their kitchen. And I had a hammer in one hand and a chisel in the other. And I was tapping away, trying to remove something from between a door frame. And I hit the, the hammer so hard onto the chisel 
that a small piece of metal broke off and flew through my left eye, like in the blink of an eye. And at first I thought that maybe some wood had broken off and gotten into my eye. So I washed it a bit, but then I saw blood out in front of me. And I soon realized, well, later on that day, I was told that a small piece of metal has gone all the way through the eyeball and is in the, in the retina, the very back, the back wall of the eye socket. And the piece of metal was like so small. And so emergency uh, surgery was required that day. Otherwise the metal would have rusted and I would have lost my eye. And yeah, I can tell you what, it was uh, a bit freaky to, to have them do an x-ray and said, yeah, there's a piece of metal in your eye. We have to take the eye out of your head while you are asleep to get the metal out. Then we'll put the eye back in and stitch you up. The operation was an incredible success. Like if you think about that, like this, the doctor is the surgeon is saying, Oh, this is what we're going to be doing by the way. And you're like, what? Um, but then afterwards the operation went really well. Um, but what actually happened was they said, okay, for the next month, you're going to have to take some eye drops to, uh, to make sure the eye is settled and everything, some cortisone. But what actually happened was that I developed a, an autoimmune disorder. Well, that's what they, they were going to diagnose that me with that because my eye was so inflamed and it wouldn't, it wouldn't calm down. It wouldn't respond to the medication extreme pain in the left eye for three years. Oh. And, uh, I, I was not able to work. Um, relationship at the time ended, ran out of money. Uh, I was 28, the most depressed I've ever been in my life, like rock bottom and in pain. Right. So that, that experience and having medical specialists tell you, look, we don't really know why your eye is not responding to the medication. Just stay on the medication. That was, that was where I was at. So I was, I was quite frustrated and I thought, what can I do for my own healing? I found a book that said, if you talk to your body, it will give you wisdom. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. Right? So I, kind of did a little meditation, got all quiet one night and, and was talking to my eye and said, what are you trying to tell me? And I really listened closely for that inner voice. Like I was, I didn't want to just tell myself something, you know, that was like a uh, um, lip service and go, yeah, that's my, I really wanted to listen for an inner voice. If such a thing existed and when I really paid attention, I, I heard this message that said, slow down, trust yourself and live more in the moment. And that was the lesson that I needed to learn because I remember at the time I was, um, I was rushing everything in my life. I was always trying to do way too much. And I think the injury was telling me, stop doing that and have, have a more of an inner journey and, and become a healer. And so I listened to my eye a few times and yep, that's the, the reason that's the message. And so I started to act on it and I was like, okay, let's, let's see what it's like to act when you trust yourself and you, you slow down the, the pace of, of in here, especially the, the critical voice. Like I used to criticize myself a lot, slow all that down, just chill it all out within about three months, my eye was completely healed and the, the specialists were like, what have you done? And I said, oh, I was been doing some meditation and, and, and reflecting and thinking and, uh, healing my heart. And they're like, well, you can come off the medication. Your eyes is now stable. And my eye has been healthy for over 10 years now, but I look back at that injury and say, thank you because it led me down a different path to become a teacher an educator and to find my, my highest mission and, and purpose in life. So 
I often think how our injuries can sometimes be the best thing that we need in order to, for life to say, stop going that way, go this way. And we can be stubborn, can't we? We're like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go. You have to really make it uh, dead obvious, you know, and um, you've got your own story as well, which I'm sure your viewers have, have heard before, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes, so sometimes we are just stubborn and we like not listening to the, to the signs that life is giving us. So it has to go, all right, give this one a more painful story. <laughs> and so I had this <laughs> idea and I was like, okay, I'm going to pay attention now. And I went from, I hate this to thank you. I'm glad this happened. Mm-hmm which has really been a change in the way I see the world. Are you loving the First Class Live Show? Then join our private Patreon community. Not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content, but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash first class life. I love that, you know, because gratitude is important. I always say where your focus goes, your energy flows and that that you focus on, you attract more of into your life. So, so much from that. The first thing I want to ask you is, to the person that is listening out there, and this is a safe space, first class family. We're all in this together. That's why we're here. So to the first class family member that is listening right now that says like, Sam, listen, I hear what you're saying. That's easier said than done. But how can you really expect me to be grateful for this pain that I went through, whether it was physical, emotional, mental pain, but how can you really expect me to be grateful for that? Like, what would you say to that person? I would say that, yes, it can seem like it's next to impossible to be grateful for pain and injury and trauma. Definitely when you are in it, it's, mm-hmm. it's really difficult. It's, and people have good reasons like, yeah, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. And I felt the same during the during the time of pain i was not seeing the gratitude at all i was i was frustrated with life and um i was disappointed with myself and yeah i did not see any uh positives and that's for sure but it it took me to go inside to listen to some deeper wisdom that that made that started the journey towards gratitude. It it takes a few years. So it took me a few years. It didn't happen overnight. You have to come out of the mud. You have to come out of the mess and kind of start to brush it off and go, all right. Yep. And when I look back now, I can say, I can see how that traumatic experience has led me to where I am. And so it, it takes time to get to that point where you can say thank you and be grateful for a very painful experience. So if, if you're in it, don't expect to just like wake up and be like roses and peaches. That's <laughs> unrealistic, right? That's completely unrealistic. But the pain is a, is a great guide. It's going to say, okay, yes, this is painful. You don't want to be where you are. So start to grapple and contend with that and use it as a a way to find your path, find your way out of it and realize that you're tougher than you think. Mm -hmm. Much tougher. Humans are resilient. They can go through horrible things and still come out the other end. The best case I can imagine is uh, his name is Viktor Frankl. And he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. You heard of it? I have not heard of that one. I've heard Absolutely. of the name, but not that yeah, book. So 
the man search man search for meaning has been published and translated in so many languages it's a small book so this guy was a, a prisoner in nazi germany in a concentration camp called Auschwitz, which was mm -hmm. one of the worst ones right and he saw his friends and family being murdered and in a in a concentration camp in germany and then he comes out and they he's a psychiatrist it's like how did you how did you cope seeing such atrocities and he said i created a bigger meaning i created a bigger meaning for the the pain and the experience so that he could be resilient while all around him was was death and cruelty and he comes out to become one of the the greatest um educators on helping others to find meaning in their life and so when people ask you know well, what can i do to find meaning in my my darkness and he says when you are devoted to another person other than yourself or you are devoted to a cause that is bigger than yourself it creates meaning for your life and that gives you the strength to face the challenge to face the trauma again and again and to push through it and overcome and triumph it is possible mm, yes i like that and it makes me think of so many different things um even with my own journey so for anybody that is new to the show in 2007 i fully recovered from being brain dead and paralyzed after a fatal fatal in air quotes car wreck um and just that whole physical emotional mental recovery process that i went through afterwards i had to shift my thinking from why me to why not me and that was part of you know as i went along the journey that i had to go through like okay this is a painful experience why is it happening and as i recovered and started to heal and everything it's like you said like when you're in it you're in it <laughs> you don't see yeah. anything else but part of mastering your mindset is understanding that there is something bigger out there for you for your purpose but you have to be willing to do the work to find it because it's not just going to come to you. You have to be willing to put in the effort, the mental, emotional, physical effort that comes with going on that journey. Like when we think about like how you said the hero's journey, a journey isn't you just sitting in one spot doing nothing. A journey is you getting up and taking action, even just one step at a time to identify that path or create that path and find your way out of the pain that you're in. And as you were talking, it made me think of like, I pictured someone lost in the middle of the forest and they're in this panic mode, like I'm surrounded by trees. There's, there's nothing else. It's like, I got bit by an animal and so I'm in this physical pain. I have this mental pain and emotional pain because I'm by myself and it feels like nobody can relate, not realizing that if we were to just take a moment and zoom out, <laughs> like mm -hmm. the trees cut off right there, but because we're in the middle of the trees, we can't see the end of the treescape. We can't see the end of the forest and that the beach side and the ocean is right just a little bit further but we have to be willing to like push through the the bush and you know chop down whatever we need to chop down to get to the other side and um yes i gotta I gotta, I gotta jump in i gotta jump in yeah go ahead the forest right so going back to joseph campbell and the hero's journey right so you have the ordinary world and you have the the world of enchantment which is usually a forest in <laughs> traditional stories from all around the world the the unassuming hero once they decide to go on their journey and follow this this voice or this calling they cross the boundary from the ordinary world into the world of enchantment which can often mean going into a dark forest many many characters and also in fairy tales the the child will go into a forest and that's where the the real adventure begins right <laughs> it's dark it's scary nothing is what it seems and mm -hmm. that causes us 
in like we have our own metaphorical dark forests that we go into and we got to find our way through that using our wits and we have to reassess everything we know and we have to reassess everything we know about ourselves we make new allies and friends and yes we make sometimes new enemies but we are also looking for the thing that we are most afraid of and then building the courage to face it and that's when the real transformation of self begins so you what when you are in the darkness it's almost like keep going deeper into the problem and try to face whatever it is that's got its power over you and then you will face yourself you'll experience a transformation and discover your gift mm. and i believe that um we everyone has a self-worth wound like the the thing that trips you up all the time the thing that you keep coming back to and it's like why do i keep doing that why do i keep tripping up on that my self-worth wound right and we are put into i believe we are put into our individual lives in order to heal that so that we can discover that it's actually an incredible power and gift that we can use then to contribute to the world and i feel that that's what i've done with my life and so i i kind of feel like i'm on my own hero's journey and i feel that everybody else is on one too and when you can frame it like that it doesn't make the journey so bad cuz you're like ah oh, we're all on our own journey trying to face our own darkness and heal ourselves and then share something with the world so i i think that's kind of what is going on when we go into our dark forest is that we will come out the other side with with light mhm mm i love that and just knowing that you know we all have these self-worth wounds for anybody that has followed me for a period of time i'm sure they know by now that for me personally that self-worth wound was that feeling of not being good enough and so it showed up in my behaviors like a perfectionist overachiever people pleaser and all of those things and so it's important that we identify what are those self-worth wounds for us personally because they do impact us whether we want them to or not they do control us whether we want them to or not so once we begin to be to become more self-aware and to identify them then we can control how they show up in our lives we can uh more efficiently identify oh wait a minute that's my my self-worth wound that is making me think like that or making me act like that and so we can course correct a lot quicker and so what would you say are some suggestions on how people can begin to identify their own personal self-worth wounds well i i think if you sit with someone long enough they know what it is and a lot of people don't want to admit it <laughs> don't want to admit where where the thorn is digging in and much like i used this idea of talking to my body when it was in pain i believe you can you can listen to your heart and it will tell you the answers to any question you ask it mm -hmm. so ask yourself you know okay i'm i'm ready to uh to to deal with my self worth so you ask your heart you know what are you trying to tell me just start with that question and sit with it and you you're going to receive wisdom trust whatever you hear write it down and you might do it a few times over a few weeks just to sort of play with it because it might be totally brand new idea for someone to do this of listening to their heart but i highly recommend that if you if you feel like you have low self worth listening to your heart in a in a quiet moment find a quiet space in your home if it's possible and i mean you can do it on the bus or in the in the traffic the heart is powerful it can it will speak and you can hear it so trust that inner voice that has been a really a key lesson that i've gained along the way and i know that every human being can do that if they stop just for a moment doesn't matter where you are from everybody's got a got a pulsing heart in here ask it questions it will 
it will speak to you. Mm, and it makes me like I had this thought earlier and then I started talking about something else and but you just brought it right back to, okay, so for the person that is listening out there and they're like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but they struggle with trusting themselves. What would you say to that person? Like, how can they overcome that ability of that self-doubt that, oh, I hear my heart, but because of the decisions I've made in the past or things I've experienced in the past, like I have a hard time trusting that what my heart is telling me is the right thing for me to do. Then I would say that that person is subordinating to somebody else's value systems mm -hmm. and they are minimizing their own true values. And that they are telling themselves essentially that what they value in life, what is meaningful to them, their priorities are not as important as the injected values that may have come from society, from uh, teachers, preachers, or parents. And so they, they feel, well, I, I should be valuing what these people have been teaching me to value and pushing down my own values. So there, there's the problem that you can't trust your own v values because you're not valuing them. You're not uh, saying that they are of any worth. And essentially what you're saying is that you are not of any worth, mm -hmm. but you, what you are trying to, you are infatuating with other people's agenda, other people's values and trying to inject that into yours. And as a result, you are inauthentic because you are not living up to your highest value. You're trying to live up to somebody else's injected values. And as a result, you can never f really feel that you are, you are in your, in your soul, you're trying to be someone else. And that all sorts of uh, problems of self-trust come in at that point. You basically create a kind of self-illusion or self-deception and you don't know who you are because you're trying to be someone else. So my recommendation to people is clarify your highest value. Clarify what has the highest meaning for you in life the activities and the tasks that bring joy to your life, the things you go, that's what I'm all about. I love doing the thing. When you have a sentence that you say, I love doing this, that, whatever, that's hinting at your values. And you, you can start to, you know, order them like top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. What do you value in life? It might be family. It might be spiritual uh, purpose. It might be your career finances it might be learning things it might be uh, your physical health so you you can look around your life and you can say okay how do i like to fill my space what are the things i like to talk about what are the things i like to think about how do i spend my time how do i spend my money all of those facts are going to help you to reflect on your highest value your life mm. the facts don't lie what you value is being demonstrated and displayed in your life right now. So if you look at it, you'll go, actually, yeah, I, I do value that. But people don't recognize it because they've been injecting the values from other people and discounting their own natural love for life. So you can see where the self-worth wound starts to, you know, get some friction there because people are not valuing who they are. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All of that. Thank you for sharing. This has been such like a spirit filled, um, calming conversation. And we thank you for that. Uh, how about, are you up for a little game? Yes, very much. Awesome. Awesome. So this is called first class favorite. And it's very easy. I am going to ask you, what is your favorite? Fill in the blank. You're going to fill in the blank. Right. Okay. Let's go. First thing but that you comes to do my it head. in ten seconds or less. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So, yes, first thing that pops in your head. <laughs> no time to think about it. Okay. So, um, what is your favorite cereal? Go. Oats, hot oats with hot bananas oats and bananas. Mm -hmm. Do you put anything else 
in there. Cinnamon, so is hot oats cinnamon, the same as oatmeal? Blueberries, uh, blueberries honey, cinnamon, uh, cashews. I make a homemade protein powder, which is just five different <laughs> types of nuts. I love it. And coffee. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, what is your favorite catchphrase or saying? Go. <sighs> A person who is living out of alignment is an imposter. A person who is living in alignment with their values is authentic. No, let me say it again. A person who is living, <laughs> a person who is living out of alignment with their highest value is an imposter. The person who is living in alignment with their highest value is authentic. Mm, did y'all hear that? I hope y'all did. If not, make sure you hit the rewind button on this episode, okay? That was good. And we didn't even talk about imposter syndrome. Uh, there were so many things, so many things. Like, uh, it's been so good. Okay, okay. What is your favorite <laughs> book, title, and author? Go. Favorite book is The Philosophy of Freedom, otherwise known as The Philosophy of Spiritual Activity by Dr. Rudolf Steiner. The Philosophy of Freedom yeah. by Dr. Rudolf Steiner. Yeah, an Austrian philosopher from the 20th century. Uh, and this book, it makes you think about the way you think about the way you think about the way you think. <laughs> and it's it's, uh, it, it's an incredible book, a mighty book that really mm. empowers you. And I, if I can summarize it, I think he's saying that Thinking is a spiritual activity that comes from the soul, not from the brain. Hmm. And it's like, chew on that. Let's see how right? that goes. Because currently the, the mainstream neuroscientists, they suggest that um, thinking and consciousness comes from the physical brain neurological firings, but they're not really sure. Hmm. And that's, that's published in most journalists, uh, journals, but he, Steiner is saying thinking is actually not coming from the brain. It's coming from our spirit. Interesting. A great like idea. It. Like like, it. Yeah, let, let's see. Let's see how we can explore that more. Yes. Okay. Next one. What is your favorite activity to do to relax? Go. DJing and beatboxing. I love DJing. Wait, you you said DJing and beatboxing? Not at the same time, but um, <laughs> I've got a I've got a mix uh, a console over there, and I like to mix uh, like house music. Uh, I've been a DJ many years in uh, in the past, but um, DJing is a lot of fun. Just playing music, groovy house tracks, funky house. I love that. Otherwise, it's beatboxing. I'll beatbox on the way to work. I'll beatbox when I'm getting groceries. Just, just old school hip hop beats. I love it. Nice, nice. What's your favorite song, title, and artist? Go. Oh, so many, so many. Um, Beyonce, New York, New York just came in. I think. No, is it Beyonce? No, that's not even my favorite one. But that's what came into my head. Concrete Jungle. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> So you did spit one out before the timer, but that wasn't technically your answer. So do we miss the buzzer? New York, are you talking about Jay-Z and Alicia Keys, New York? Maybe, yeah. I'm horrible with remembering song names. You know, the, my absolute favorite one would have to be, um, what's his name? What's his name? He sings Good Golly Miss Molly. Good, Good golly, golly Miss Molly. Molly. <laughs> What's That's his what... name again? I've got on my wall here, I've got the Jazz Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, and Dean Martin. Right Ooh. here. And they're all got a cigarette in their hand and <laughs> having a great time. So, so I love jazz music as well. There's there's one by Frank Sinatra, uh, where he's he he's singing in a bar about, you know, um one make it one more for my baby and one more for the road. So we'll go with that one. I know I answered too many questions. No, it's fine. It's fine. Put me on the spot. Listen, that's part of the fun. What is your favorite place to travel specifically? Go. Little Italy, San Diego. Ooh. California. 
Little Italy in San Diego, California. Okay, okay. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, that wasn't too bad on you, right? Didn't hurt you too much with my questions, did I? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at well, all. Well, thank That's you good. for good playing. What'd you say? Do I win a prize? Nope. Do I? Do but I? No, no prize. To, there's no prize. The prize is that you get to join our Author Hall of Fame because. Listen, First Class Family, make sure that you subscribe to our private Patreon community. That's where you will find access to our First Class Favorite Things list that is uniquely created by all of our phenomenal guests. You will see our reading list, our song playlist, our favorite places to travel because we're cultured people and because we prioritize self-care in our lives, our favorite relaxing activities to do. And now Self Worth Sam has just added his answers to that list. <laughs> That's People are going to be beatboxing all day. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's also bonus videos from our phenomenal guests at dropping bonus gems and also lots of other resources. So make sure you subscribe to our private Patreon community. Meanwhile, having back into this conversation, Sam, please let us know the answer to this question. If you are new to First Class Life, it actually stands for an acronym that represents all of the different characteristics and skills that we want to embody into our lifestyle to be able to create a first class life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. And if you want to know what those stand for, that acronym stands for, then you can do one of two things. You can either go listen to the very first episode of the First Class Life Show, where I explain each of the factors in detail, or you can head to First Class Life Shop dot com where you can purchase the book first class life 10 key factors to create a life full of purpose fulfillment and happiness so meanwhile sam which yeah. key factor do you resonate with the most well self-worth i'm gonna go with <laughs> self -worth. pretty obvious <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we don't have to ask why you picked that one. Yes, like you said, pretty, pretty obvious. <laughs> yep, yep. I think self-worth is um, um, the kind of self-worth that I'm talking about is one that is grounded, mm -hmm. one that is um, grateful, mm -hmm. and it gives you a kind of grit and resilience for life. And... Uh, it gives you inner authority, that kind of self-worth that makes you say, I want to, I want to participate in life. Mm -hmm. I want to share my value, my worth with the world. And the more I share my worth with the world, the more my worth goes up. And so it's, it's a conversation. I believe that developing self-worth is a, a two way thing. You give out your worth and it comes back. And then you realize that actually self-worth was never missing. Mm. It was just an awareness, a lack of awareness of your own worth. But when you start to uh, give people your value or give people value that they want, you get a, a, a good feeling out of that, of, of contributing to their lives. Yes, I like it. I like it. Now, speaking of contributing to others' lives, how do you impact the world as a leader today? Um, what I do is one-on-one -on -one coaching and speaking, and I also have an online course and a book all about self-worth and imposter syndrome. And a lot of people uh, can get the, the free course by going to my website, which is selfworthsam.com. And... I work with people one-on-one -on -one using something called the Demartini method. The Demartini method is, in my opinion, the most cutting edge personal transformation tool on the planet today. And it was developed by Dr. John Demartini, an American human behavioral expert. After decades of research into every field of science, theology, spiritual wisdom, and he has created the Demartini Method, which is a series of questions that neutralizes emotions 
and expands a person's consciousness. And mm. so I'm trained, I'm trained in this method and I use it with my clients and they come to me with sometimes a, 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 a hang up or something that they're resenting about themselves that they've been talking to a therapist for years about and not really had any closure on it. And in about 90 minutes, that person is in tears of gratitude and saying thank you to themselves for the thing that they used to resent about themselves because of a shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. And these questions that the Demartini uh, method is all about helps you see the other side of who you are and love it and say, I'm glad that the thing that I'm that way, I can now see how it was actually helping me to fulfill my highest value. It's a very powerful method. And I'm very inspired and um, I'm just, I mean, love with, with that work. So that's what, that's why I call myself self-worth Sam is I help people heal their self-worth wound. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. And thank you for sharing. Definitely going to be looking up Dr. John Demartini um, after this. Okay. So, and you have, um, let's see, a five-day plan that you would like to share. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's called Break the Imposter Syndrome Cycle, five-day plan to ditch the doubt and embrace your expertise. It's a uh, five-part videos. It's free. You can sign up for it at my website selfworthsam.com and actually it's going to give people an insight into the work of Demartini and it helps a person to really start to um, build emotional intelligence and to, to, uh, to value who they really are. So that is completely available for people to go and get it and um, to at least that's a great starting place for people and it gives them a taste into what it's like to work with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, in addition to that, I know you just shared where to find um, the video series, but how can everyone reach out to you, connect with you, follow you on these internet streets? Yeah, so on all platforms that are major, just go at Self Worth Sam. So that's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Self Worth Sam, and imposter syndrome expert is the easiest way to get in, in touch with me. Thank you. Now, don't worry, guys. We will have all of that info right in the show notes so you can just click away to whatever you need. Meanwhile, I know that you have spent the past hour here with us, and we are truly grateful for that because you could be doing anything in the world, but you have shared your time, your valuable time here with us. So again, make sure you subscribe, love, like, share, review, do all of the things and spread awareness about this show, the First Class Life Show, because it is your personal development show to help you go out there and maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness because you deserve it and so much more. Until next week, bye. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. But please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it.